the king of the workers of the world. Hi, folks. Joe's the king because he can buy more with his wages than any other worker on the globe. Now, what makes it possible for Joe to earn such a good living? He's no smarter than workers in other countries. Are you kidding? He's no stronger than workers in other lands. Oh, yeah? Well, just watch me. Ow! Just because Joe's an American doesn't mean... Yeah? Well, being an American is the best thing in the... Oh! Ooh, my back! Sure, being an American is great, but how could you be superior to any foreigner when you or your folks might be any one of a dozen different races or religions? So, if you're no Superman, it must be the American way of doing things that makes you the luckiest guy in the world. I don't think I'm so lucky. You don't? Well, let me show you. Hey, what's that gadget? Television? No, it's a time machine. Just pull that lever. We'll see how people worked a hundred years ago. Hey, this I like. Oh, that's too far back. Try again. We want to stop at 1850. <laughs> Who's the character? That's your grandfather, Joe. Oh. He had to work 69 hours a week to earn a living because he had only inexpensive hand tools and his own strength to help him make things. Your grandfather was a powerful man, yet his strength equaled only one-tenth of a horsepower. You have hundreds of horsepower in this costly giant of a machine to multiply your strength and efficiency a thousand times. This makes it possible for you to earn more than any worker in history. And still have leisure time each day to enjoy life. So I'm lucky. But what about the rich guy who does nothing while I do the work? True, there are rich people who contribute nothing. And there are poor people who contribute the same. But most of the invested capital that buys the tools you use comes from your fellow Americans. Forty million of us have money in the banks. Seventy million of us own insurance policies. Over fifteen million of us invest savings in corporation stocks and bonds, which help to finance industry. Each year, the people of America invest billions of dollars to create new plants and equipment. This invested capital buys the tools which make a man's labor worth more because he produces more. In China, for example, where there is practically no capital available for investment in plants or tools, a man's labor is not worth very much. A coolie takes 10 days to move 10 gallons of kerosene 100 miles at a freight cost of 10 cents a gallon. An American railroad worker takes only two hours to move 100,000 gallons of kerosene 100 miles at a freight cost of one cent a gallon. The coolie makes 10 cents a day. An average American railroad worker makes $10 a day, or 100 times more than the coolie. The average railroad worker has the benefit of a $20,000 investment in equipment. The Chinese coolie's equipment is worth only 10 cents. With constant improvement in expensive tools and the skill to use them, the value of any man's labor can be multiplied many times. Naturally, the people in this country who invest their savings with industry expect dividends. No dividends, no investments. Without new capital each year to finance new plants, tools, and equipment, labor and management would soon find themselves in pretty bad shape. 
Yeah, without capital to buy new tools, I might not do so good. But look what a new invention did to my grandpa. For 25 years, he knocks his brains out in the wagon works. Then along comes the gas buggy. Need I tell you what happened to Grandpa? The history of our country proves that new inventions create thousands of jobs for everyone they displace. So it wasn't long before your grandfather had a better job, had more pay for less work. Our industrial progress is largely the result of the competitive struggle between companies to capture the market to increase profits. Huge sums are spent each year to make a better product to sell for less. Yet regardless of how much money is spent to develop a new idea, there is often failure. When research proves successful, everyone shares in the accomplishment. The business which fails to give the consumer as much value as a competitor gives often goes bankrupt. However, on a national scale, competition gives the greatest good to the greatest number by continually producing more and better goods at lower prices. The American way of doing things makes it possible for more people to own their own homes. We're only 7% of the world's population, but we have 50% of the radios. We have 54% of the world's telephones. Americans own practically all the refrigerators in existence <laughs> to give them plenty of ice quickly and easily. Bathtubs, we've got 92% of them. Most of us have the leisure time to enjoy the peace and quiet of the beautiful countryside as we drive about in 72% of the world's automobiles. <laughs> Under the protection of our freedoms, American labor, management, and capital, the greatest production team in the history of mankind, have made the United States the industrial master of the Capital must continue to provide industry with the funds to create new tools and plants. Labor and management must continue to increase the production of better goods at lower prices so that more people will be able to buy the things that make life easier and happier for all of us. Then Joe will continue to be the king of the workers of the world. You said it, brother.